to this movement of the knee, because I skipped talking about this, and it's really pretty nifty. It's all nifty. Everything is just fascinating, eventually. At least in my world. <coughs> so, the patella, like everything else, has a couple of choices about how it moves. And in, in, um, it stays in relationship with the tibia when it moves. So it doesn't move away from the tibia and back towards the tibia. So that relationship between the bottom of the patella and the tibial tuberosity stays relatively consistent. But what happens on the top is that quadriceps, four muscles, come in here and attach. And they attach from all these different sides. And they attach um, slightly to the back edge here. And then some of them attach more on the front. The very back surface is hyaline cartilage, where it's gliding over the femoral condyle. But depending on a variety of things, uh, include, and part of it's how the muscles are used, the patella can get tugged to the side or to the other side as the knee extends. So if you use, if one uses, for example, the inner muscles here more, the patella might get pulled off to the medial side. The pel it could spin, though it could also get pulled off and displaced laterally. So two things can happen in the patella. It can spin, or it can get displaced this way. Or it can get pulled laterally. Because of the shape of the intercondylar groove in this lateral, it's less easy for it to get pulled out of the notch to the outside than it is to the inside. <clears throat> and you can, depending on how mobile your patella is, if your leg is straight or relatively extended, you can slide your patella side to side, should you want to, or not. And it, it might not, you might not want to do it, it might feel yucky, but it has a little more ability to slide medially than laterally on the femur. So part of what will attack, uh, affect the patellar tracking is how we're using the upper leg, what muscles we're using, where we're pulling from, from the outside or from the inside. <laughs>